uh, to pay attention to your the way you want to live a life with your family and not to be wasting a time on a useless thing so this is the only month that Allah has given us so the purpose of spending a one month like that so Allah want us to be a strong enough that the way uh, we are in a one month so it should be the same way in the rest of the 11 months so that's why Allah says Allah so you can build up a taqwa in yourself you are able to become like strong enough in a one month that you are able to spend in another uh, 11 months till the next Ramadan so you stay away from uh, sins and uh, do not be a victim of a deception of a uh, shaitan and build a life uh, beautifully so so what we learn from this month uh, we learn from this month, uh, so we are able to uh, control our nafs, we are able to control our desires, we know the shaitan is locked. So now, now many people ask this question, like if the shaitan is being locked in a chain, then how is that people still uh, sinning? So let, let us understand something. If Allah has uh, chained all the shayateen and He closed the doors of all the hellfires, and Allah opens all the doors of a Jannah and all the doors of a blessing. So Ramadan is something like, uh, I'm going to give an example, like uh, let, let's say there is a bank on the street. There's a bank on the street and there's a new security guard and the money is like, like flying away. And uh, so it, it is like that the bank management would tell the public whoever has the power to take as much as they want, they can uh, take it away and benefit of the bank because there's no security guards and there's no management there's nothing and the money is flying away in the bank similarly the Ramadan is something like similar um, the month the blessing month Allah said this is the blessing month and uh, it's, it's a full of blessings and the full of asking of forgiveness and make Allah please and give a life uh, surrender to Allah and live the life according to the Prophet uh, so we need to uh, Allah gives an opportunity to to be like that because uh, Ramadan is like an open bank when there is no security guard there is no management Allah Allah is telling us that this is the month okay this is the bank is open so how much power do you have to spend the sacrifice and do more deeds especially doing a lot of sadaqah and especially spending it too much in uh, doing a zikr of Allah and spending it too much time in uh, uh, performing an extra on wafils so this is like uh, how much power do we have so we can take a benefit of that so the more benefit we take care of that we are able to um, uh, clarify and we are able to purify our, our soul we are able to uh, kill our desires and we need to learn to live uh, according to the Prophet uh, so this is a really great month of uh, that help us to purify ourselves so we are able to make ourselves of the Ramadani speech now this is not uh, really a trial in the month the real trial is something which starts after the Ramadan because the trial is not something within a month because in this the month because, because we know that this month belongs to Allah and we have to live a life like that and we have to do these things we have to recite the Quran and we have to do extra nafils and we have to do extra zikr and this is not something that the Ramadan is not a month of trial because the real trial starts when the Ramadan is finished because what we learn in the Ramadan we have to start our trial after Ramadan till the next Ramadan so that's what our trial starts from and Allah does not want to be uh, ourselves to fall into something which we be, we're going to um, become a victim of a shaitan he deceive us because if you read in surah al-arab verse number from 16 to 18 shaitan say from uh, uh, from la aqadun wa min wa 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 so shaitan say i will uh, control human wing and I will see it on their ways I will uh, attack them from the right side from the left side from the front side from the back side now each direction has something like a long lectures on each direction what does really mean when the Quran says the shaitan will attack from the right and the left side from the front side or from the back side so it has like a long interpretation I'm not going to go into that so basically I'm going to come to the uh, main short as possible the shaitan is saying to Allah that I'm going to 
uh, attack the human beings from everywhere and there will be a nowhere that they going to be uh, survive with that so it's a really great blessing and it's a really uh, so much uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created us and he gives and the best thing Allah has given us he opens the doors of our repenting each time do we sin so this was the only thing which shaitan hates the most because shaitan said I will fill up their a whole tank of uh, bad days and they will enter into hellfire so uh, based on that and Allah said that each time my servant will come to me and ask for forgiveness from freely of the heart inshallah I will forgive them like there's a beautiful ayat in a surah, surah to Zumar uh, verse number 53 where the uh, uh, the Sahaba used to come to the Prophet and they used to ask the Prophet okay I have seen this and I have seen this will I have a mercy and will I have a mercy of Allah will I going to be forgiven or I'm going to end up in a in a hellfire so there was a beautiful verse and this is the most verse that really encourages me and I also tell the same verse to everyone even like many people uh, send me a message asking me the question okay I have seen this and I have seen that and uh, will my sins will be uh, forgiven there's a beautiful ayah in Surah Zumar, verse number uh, Surah 639, verse number 53, where Allah says, uh, "Tell now Allah is asking the Prophet said, tell those people. Now who are those people? And the verse starts with like the Awwal Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, Sunnah Rahman Darim. Kul ya ibadi al-ladina asrafu ala an kusain la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Inna Allah yaghfir zinuba jamia inna hu wa la wafurrain. Allah said asking the Prophet to tell those people now who are those people who have committed adultery who are committed shirk who are committed with any type of sales which even fill up the whole sky will which is even uh, uh, filling up the the galaxy tell those people do not be despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did you commit the fornication did you uh, fall into pornography do you fall into something alcohol you did zina or did you did adultery and you are uh, eating a riba or any type of it's sin but if you have a truly uh, iman and you say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah if you have that point in your heart and you will know that you're doing a wrong so just turn back to allah if you turn back to allah just say oh allah please forgive me I will promise you I will not do it again now this is the point when each time a person go back to Allah and ask Allah and uh, each time he's thinking to go back to Allah and ask for forgiveness at the same time shaitan whispers in the heart and in the mind the shaitan would say listen you are keep committing a sin you are you keep doing fornication you keep falling into an adultery what is the point of asking for forgiveness all the time you do that and you're going to forgive you're going to ask for forgiveness the next day you're going to do same in two days you're going to be uh, doing same so this is shaitan who makes a person to fall into uh, the same problem each time a person sin but rather we should just remember what Allah tells us to do Allah tells us each time you sin just go back to Allah just go back to Allah and ask for forgiveness because what happens like naturally each time a person is asking uh, forgiveness from Allah his each time his sins are being uh, forgiven each time his sins are uh, forgiven each time he go back to Allah it's not that uh, each time you sin and shaitan whisper in your heart and the sh and the person says now forget it I'm going to ask for forgiveness because I'm going to ask for forgiveness and the next day after two days I'm going to be uh, doing that again so what is the purpose and what is this, what is the point of an asking forgiveness from Allah so each, so but we should remember what Allah says each time that we sin we should go back to Allah and ask for forgiveness oh Allah uh, I have sinned and I have did a zulam on myself and there's a beautiful dua of Hazrat uh, uh, Prophet uh, Adam al Islam, where it says in Surah Al Araf, verse number 23, it says, Oh, Ya Allah, I'm the one who did the zulm on myself. Please, Ya Allah, forgive me. I will not do it again. Because what happens each time 
a person asks for forgiveness, his iman is getting more stronger, stronger. Each time a person sins, his iman gets stronger. Each time he asks for forgiveness, he's getting more stronger, more stronger, more, str more stronger. So what happens after some time, after sinning and asking forgiveness, sinning and asking forgiveness, uh, sinning and asking forgiveness, and the one time that appears that suddenly his all sins are being wiped and he's being purified and his iman becomes very strong, that that is the last last thing he would say i would never do it ever again now now he is being purified so each time uh, a person sins shaitan puts in his uh, heart that what's the purpose of doing that because you sin it and you ask for forgiveness he is trying to deceive a human being why you want to do that because you ask for forgiveness and you're going to do it again and um, you're going to be uh, doing it again so what is the purpose of asking of forgiveness but we should remember uh, even a person sins any time any sin you commit a zina you commit adultery you commit you fall into the fornication you do the, any type of sin even it's a major sin or minor sin, minor sin or even it's even you fall into kufr even you fall into a shirk even you are doing any type of um, a sin do not be despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each time we have to uh, continue asking for forgiveness uh, from Allah. So this is the month of our Ramadan that we are able to uh, fight ourselves and uh, we need to make ourselves so strong that we need to adopt all these things with, that we did in Ramadan that we have to do the same thing that we in the entire 11 months till the next Ramadan. So when we go to the next Ramadan, whatever the minor sins you have done or you have committed something, we should go back to Allah and in, Ramadan, in the next Ramadan we come to the same point that we ask Allah, oh Allah please forgive us that we did this mistake and that mistake and uh, in for 11 months I wasn't able to do as much as I wanted to do so I'm back again in the Ramadan so I'm going to build my Iman again. So what happens at the time of the death he all sins are being wiped out and Allah grants him Jannah inshallah. So, so this is the way it works each time we sin we need to go back to Allah and we have to ask for a forgiveness. I'm going to ask the public, uh, whoever is watching, and I'm going to see if there's any comments and somebody has a message to say. So most of them, and also uh, I'm being live streaming on uh, on a Facebook and also this is on um, um, on a YouTube, our main channel, which is like an Amar Said uh, official channel. You can go there and you can check it there. There's a live going on. Uh, right now so if somebody wants to call in so please give us a call if not so I'm going to be uh, that the people who has a missed the call so I rather just call them and say Eid Mubarak so let me see uh, who called so let's start with someone <coughs> Oh, oh, by the way, um, you can talk in English and you can talk to Urdu. You can talk in English and you can talk in English. So please give us a call and let's have a talk and uh, let's have a fun as this is an Eid day for us. It looks like his brother is not picking up the phone because he was being calling and uh, want to wish a Eid Mubarak. And he just called right exactly on the 11 o'clock, but due to the technical problem, uh, it wasn't uh, started that time. Mm. So I'm going to take a break right now. So meanwhile, keep watching and stay tuned and I'll be right with you in shortly.
Hello. Assalamualaikum. I'm back in in the live program, and all those uh, people are watching right now. So I encourage you to share this and ask people to call in and say Eid Mubarak and uh, do not be shy. Do not want to say anything. Just say us about what are you cooking today and how did you spend the day on a first day on Eid. So give us a call and inshallah we'll talk about that. And also I try to reach out several brothers who called earlier and it was uh, it wasn't ready due to a technical problem. So inshallah uh, all those are people watching right now and ask them to uh, pick up the phone and give us a call and say Eid Mubarak let me see how many people call in and want to say uh, and uh, Eid Mubarak because I'm going to be here for like another uh, I believe in, in like a half an hour or maybe one hour I'm not sure depending on how many calls do I receive inshallah and also um, many people ask like uh, sending a question today about asking a fatwa as we are not ready for answering any question and answer session today so you're going to be just basically having a fun program so people want to call in and they want to see how did they spend the day today and also we're going to be making a dua uh, for the people who passed away in a plane crash in in a Karachi and near the Karachi airport and due uh, to a uh, technical fault and I, I believe there was a fire in the engine wallah alam what happened but may we make a dua for those people who passed away May Allah forgive their sins and those who pass away and uh, this will like a truly be a tragic news that we hear on a few days before the Eid um, because those people who were traveling to Karachi from Lahore and uh, they were expecting to spend uh, the time with the family and uh, they were looking to uh, having a good time with the family but nobody knows even like let's understand something when Allah has written in the fortune what time and the place where their soul is going to be taken away and just imagine something they were expecting to just land on the airport few minutes before the landing the plane crash so think about something those people who were uh, sitting in the plane they probably be thinking that inshallah i will be landing and i'm i have a lot of gifts to give to my family and i'm going to be doing this at night and i'm going to celebrate and i'm going to do this with my family and I'm going to go for a tour and uh, do something but just imagine no one knows at the time of an hour uh, the moment that's going to come their soul is going to be uh, taken away it, it's really tragic not imagine people no one knows this Allah says in the Quran every soul shall taste a death and the hour even the even there were many sahabas and uh, there was many people who used to come to the prophets at the time of each prophet was being uh, came for the message and the public and the people used to come to the the messengers asked them the same question when is the last hour and the prophet وسلم, and the other messenger used to tell their ummah that only Allah knows he does not have a uh, I'm not an Allah al -Ghayub, and uh, only Allah knows when a person dies when his soul is going to be taken away so just imagine that people who were just expecting to just land in another few minutes they just passed away because their soul is being taken away in I believe it to be within one second and just Malcolm Moth came and just take away their soul because they must be expecting that in a few minutes they're going to land and the first thing when they go home they're going to take a rest and some of them are going to take a breakfast and some of them are going to have a, a lunch and a dinner and they're going to travel to other family members and visit them or maybe they're going to go go for a tour with their family and children but nobody knew that and after a few seconds uh, their soul is going to be taken away and they're going to pass away nobody knows that they're going to die so this is the point uh, as Allah says in Surah al mulk verse number uh, Allah says in uh, Surah Al-Murk verse number uh, 2 where Allah says Allah has created a life and the death so Allah can test you like the time Allah has created a life and the death so Allah can test you like the time before the death how did you live your life according to Allah and the Prophet and what did you achieve uh, from this new dunya and what did you have gathered something that would help you for an Agra that there's a uh, verse in the Surah Zariyat verse number uh, 55 where Allah says um, I have created the human beings and the jinns so they can just 
uh, worship me. Now this is something to understand. So my majority, maybe some Muslim do understand the word. Uh, um, the word worshiping means is, is like uh, uh, doing a five times prayer or doing a fasting, doing a Hajj. Or, um, or paying a zakat or saying shahada and that makes you Muslim and uh, making most majority people do understand that the make performing a five times Allah is something what it means ibadah. Ibadah let's understand the word worshipping and ibadah. The word worshipping and ibadah it really means how are you spending your 24 hours life according to the commandments of Allah and by the lifestyle of the Prophet that what ibadah really means it's not something making a, it's not only means that you're making a five time prayer or you're paying a zakat or doing whatever you want but this really ibadah means to surrendering your life submitting your life and just living in each moment of your life according to the commandments of Allah and also living a life according to the Prophet وسلم, that's really ibadah means like for example what time do we wake up and what we do in the first time when we wake up and what do we do in afternoon afternoon time and uh, at night time and we have to do our daily azkar and we have to spend uh, time in ibadah how do we uh, maintaining our uh, home sources and how do we are developing our kids and all these things how we are treating our parents our brothers our sisters and other muslims our neighbors and how we are raising our children how we are treating our parents like every step of our life is is an ibadah how we are uh, spending our life according to the Prophet وسلم, like what we are doing like it, it's not something you wake up first thing in the morning and the first thing what I is like is it this thing becomes so much common that when when a person wakes up the first thing he does is pick up the phone and he just look at the message okay he send the message then he spends some like almost like 15 or 20 minutes or half an hour even some of them we might spend like at one hour just just walk up and in the blanket and in the bed and he's just like you know texting and responding and checking his emails everything the first thing the person does is and nobody knows how many people does the recite dua when they wake up like how many people do recite the dua according to the sunnah when they the first thing they do is open the eyes make a dua uh, Allah has given us a life after we passed away and uh, no one does that the first thing the people does when they wake up they just pick up the phone and the first thing they do is just like texting texting whatsapp messages and skype messages and on the internet now what's going on on facebook and everything now the time is running out the time is running out just imagine something you spent half an hour in the bed 15 20 minutes in a bed even in a 50 minutes you can recite la ilaha illallah zikr 1000 times in your fingers in your tasbih on you can do adhkar that is way better than in the universe than wasting your time on a whatsapp than wasting your time on something by just walk up and you start doing a texting 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 all the time wasting your time texting now so what happens now the second step when they get up from the bed they go to the bathroom take the phone with them now they're sitting on the toilet now they're doing the same thing texting, checking the whatsapp message, sending the political message, what's going, what does um, this minister say, what does that mean, why you care, just wake up, say according to, them. this is, this is something people do not understand, living a life according to sunnah means every step you have to know the azkar, when you wake up you have to say zikr of Allah, alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. they have to say adwa, that's a sunnah, when you go into the bathroom, nobody does that, they take the phone into the pocket, they go to the bathroom and now they're sitting on a toilet, if they're spending a one minute or two minutes or ten minutes, they're just doing the same thing and they spend 20 minutes in the bed, they spend, spend another 10-15 minutes in the bathroom, just texting sitting on a toilet chair and that's wasting a time, then they come up, when they come out of the bathroom, again, phone again they're checking messages now they're sitting on the breakfast again on the phone they're checking their whatsapp messages okay he sent me now responding answering responding talking 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 whatsapp messages when they finish that now they go to work now they go to work now in the travel when let's say if somebody's driving to the work now going going in the car 
the the cost of the signal again text messages again they checking whatsapp messages what's the message and now they does that when they park the car when they reach the destination the first thing they they check on the phone okay who called me who text message don't responding back this this is become our so much we have become so much addicted with the telephone that we have to give a now that the social media and all these things are very best for professionals who are doing something really uh work of like business they have a store they are doing online marketing all something into independent entrepreneur uh services or marketing or in a digital marketing these are the people they are supposed to be uh, spending a bit of time as because they this is their job but any type of like a, a common muslims and uh, any common muslims and uh, what they just like let's understand something we wake up in the morning until at the night time do we ever think of before sleeping like how much time do we spend on our social media how much time like let's say we have a 24 hours in 24 hours how much time did we sacrifice our nafs for the sake of allah how much time did we spend a time uh, for the sake of the Prophet ﷺ, if we want to check something, just ignore. Yeah, so I was talking about social media, like within a 24 hours, how much time uh, do we spend in 24 hours? How much time did we sacrifice our nafs, uh, ourselves, for the sake of Allah? And how much time did we spend uh, for the sake of the Prophet uh, ﷺ? Like, let's say in 24 hours, we have a five times daily prayers that we have to make. Even some Muslims, when they spend the time in praying Salah, they really have a time so much like a restricted into like a minimum time they spend in it. Some of them maybe don't even uh, perform Sunnah and some of them doesn't even uh, perform any Nawafil just like they do and they, first, they finish the Fahd and they run away with that and some of them spend more time in Fahd and sometimes they really do which is called the Khushu Khuzu like uh, um, that the pray it has to be prayed uh, like worship Allah the way Allah deserves to be worshipped so the pray as uh, you deserve to uh, perform salah the way it is supposed to be it's not like um, when you're doing a four rakat salah and you just finish and do the uh, wadu and you finish it off like within two minutes you finish your four rakat now there are other type of people who wants to do uh, four rakat salah but they spend almost like maybe a 10 or 15 minutes just to finish a four rakah. Now, what is the difference between the like four rakahs? So one of them finish in two minutes and one of them finish like in uh, 15, 20 minutes. Because more time you spend with Allah, your dua has a power. If your dua has a power, more Allah be pleased with you. So this is basically something like uh, if you enter a classroom, there's a two types of students. Uh, one of the students is someone who just like entered into the class uh, at the last moment, who would just say, like, oh, sir, I'm present, and he would have a check mark, okay, he's present. And one of the students who just go before the class, he just gets into the syllabus, he just studies everything, and uh, he understands what the class is about, and the professor is really happy with that. Now, the, similarly, when we go to make a prayer, the way it is supposed to be prayed, the way uh, it, uh, according to the prayer, it has to be prayed, it is something like uh, you have to do a proper the first thing you have to do you have to be in a proper tahara number two when you finish your tahara you have to go before the time and just sit down even if you go when you're going to the masjid you have to do two rakat before starting your sunnah or the further before you do that but if you're doing it at home you have to have a proper tahara and first of all and also you need to uh, watch out for your clothing that you wear so some of the people they just walk up and use the same clothing and do they do their wudu and just stand uh, for the prayer but rather when you go to the prayer just make a proper tahara make a proper wudu and this is the way it's supposed to be now some of the people they just finish the wudu in 30 seconds some of them them they finish the wudu in like a couple of minutes because they want to make sure they are doing the real wudu according to Asuna and also uh, so when you go to the prayer and you just start with nicely and very peacefully and when we say Allah Akbar so we leave everything on our side and we just say Allah Akbar and uh, pray with the khushu khuzu and we have to be very uh, slow when we 
uh, do our, our prayer. It's not something like it. we have to just say Allah Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Rahmanir Malikum, then we finish everything, finish it off like in every in few minutes. So this is another type of prayer that when we when we start our prayer, uh, we have to do very uh, slowly and we have to concentrate each of the recitation uh, that we pray. We say Allah Akbar. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa tabarakasma. This is the way it's supposed to be a prayer a very slow way because some of them they just wake up in the fajr time. Most people does that in a fajr time. When they wake up they just go running to the bathroom and finish it off and start their prayer and finish everything within few minutes because the shaitan puts in their mind and shaitan puts in their nerves that oh you have to wake up early in the morning. You have to do this job and you have to do that job. So just finish it off. It's okay for one day. Next day he does the same thing. Third day he does the same thing. But rather when it comes to uh, obedient and worshiping Allah you have to be uh, very slow it has to be very has a some uh, quality in there and uh, according to the Sunnah and the commandments of Allah this is the way um, it's supposed to be prayer so I'm